Dr. John O'Connor was fired last week from his job as the doctor in Fort Chippewan, Alberta, a small Aboriginal community downstream from the oil sands. You might recall Dr. O'Connor. It would be hard to miss him. He's been doing the anti-oil sands media circuit nonstop for 10 years. He even was a paid activist for Greenpeace, traveling the world, disparaging the industry in the community that he worked for. Well, the, the uh, firing of Dr. John O'Connor was not missed by a lot of anti-oil sands media who immediately linked it to his criticism of the oil sands as a doctor. Here's what I mean. About 10 years ago, Dr. O'Connor started saying that the oil sands were causing cancer in Fort Chippewan. Rare cancers that might happen only one in 100,000 people were popping up three, four, five, six times in the tiny community of Fort Chip. This made him a media celebrity. It also caused an investigation into his ethics by the Alberta College of Physicians and Surgeons. Now this became a media celebrity item too because he wasn't just the truth teller, he was the truth teller being silenced by the Alberta government. So you can imagine this week when he was finally sacked, that same theory came back out in the anti-oil sands media. This good guy was fired by the bad guys who were finally muzzling him. Here, take a look at some of the headlines. Here's the Edmonton Journal who said they dismissed the doctor who raised the alarm about cancer. Why would you put that in the headline other than you're trying to imply that's why he was fired? The Huffington Post pointed out that all those ethics charges against him were dismissed. So did the Fort McMurray Today newspaper which said his license which had been revoked was reinstated and the charges against him dismissed. And the Tides Foundation funded Tai online newspaper also said that John O'Connor was absolved of any wrongdoing. All of this hinted just this past week that John O'Connor was wrongly fired and again that nefarious politics of the oil sands was having their way, which is sort of odd because of course Alberta now has a new Democrat government. Uh, I just want to throw in one last little wrinkle from the Tides fund, Foundation funded TIE. They point out that John O'Connor was such a good egg that when he was in Fort Chip it wouldn't even be handshakes. He's a hugger and I can testify that's true. I met John O'Connor once and he hugged me. So what's the deal? Who fired him? Was it some oil man pulling the strings? Or has Rachel Notley's NDP government become captured by the oil patch? Well, neither. All these white splaining journalists didn't mention that the woman who fired Dr. John O'Connor is actually an Aboriginal leader. Her name is Roxanne Marcel, and she's the boss of the Aboriginal Health Authority called the Nunny Health Board that actually pays Dr. O'Connor's bills. The chief of the Mikisu Indian Band, Steve Corderay, expanded on the reasons why John O'Connor was fired. He hadn't shown up in the community for years. For years. Now, to their credit, the Edmonton Journal actually tucked this in their story. John O'Connor was billing this Aboriginal Health Authority $5,000 a month just to be on call on his phone. You know, from wherever he was. He'd take a phone call, give some advice, maybe give a prescription over the phone, chat with folks. But according to the chief, he had actually not been to Fort Chip for years. He had time to attend any oil sands, anti-oil sands protest that would pay him. That's where I met him. He was at an oil sands debate. But he actually didn't have time to go to all those people he claimed to love to hug. Isn't that funny? Um, but look, aside from the fact that he didn't show up in the community that he claimed to be the doctor of, aside from the fact that he was billing five grand a month to answer his phone occasionally, was he right? And are those newspapers right? Did he f correctly finger the oil sands for causing cancer? Was he in fact muzzled by the health authority? And uh, by the, by, sorry, by the College of Physicians and Surgeons? And in the end, was he vindicated? Were those charges against him dismissed? I think it's worth discussing because I don't think we're done hearing from Dr. John O'Connor. I think even though he hasn't set foot in Fort Chip for years, he's going to continue to dine out on this myth of himself as a whistleblower for many years to come. And like I say, it's good enough for Greenpeace to pay him. Well, I have in my hand here 
a report by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta into Dr. O'Connor's conduct. They investigated him for two full years and they issued this lengthy report. Dr. O'Connor refused to allow this report to be made public and so some whistleblower leaked it to the media. They were so concerned about the difference between what the facts were and the myth that Dr. O'Connor had created in the media. I think this is an appropriate moment to go through this report and tell you the truth. The first thing, as I mentioned, as you can see on the first page, is this is not some slapdash report. This is a two-year investigation, not only into the claims by Dr. O'Connor about cancer in Fort McMurray, but also into Dr. O'Connor's own conduct. On page two, let me show you the summary of this report. It says that Dr. O'Connor failed to inform public health officials and the Alberta Cancer Board of the identities and of clinical circumstances of patients whom he diagnosed with various types of cancer in a timely way. He hid the facts from the Cancer Board. Number two, Dr. O'Connor did not respond to multiple requests for information after he had made public his concerns. And number three, Dr. O'Connor made a number of inaccurate or untruthful claims with respect to the number of patients with confirmed cancers. Dr. O'Connor is a liar. Now they didn't say this lightly. They said this after two years of investigation and this lengthy report, which I'll take a few minutes to go through. Look at page three of this report. The report says Dr. O'Connor was approached by the CBC, big surprise, they hate the oil sands, and in a series of interviews conducted from March to May of 2006, indicated that he had seen as many as five cases of cholangiocarcinoma and variably three and likely four confirmed cases. So, I mean, he was changing his story, three cases, four cases, five cases, but didn't matter. It was a very rare form of cancer and he loved telling the CBC about it. Remember, he's an anti-oil sands activist paid by Greenpeace. It wasn't just the CBC. The Glow and Mail always liked to, likes to kick the oil patch. So look on page four of this report. The Globe and Mail published a news article in which they quote Dr. O'Connor listing a series of cancer cases, including six deaths from colon cancer, the youngest of whom was 33. By the way, as you can see, the Alberta Cancer Board study did not confirm this information even with Dr. O'Connor's written list of cancer cases. In other words, he just made it up. He had not seen these cases. They did not exist. He made them up. He lied. Now, by the way, Alberta Health and Wellness immediately took Dr. O'Connor's alarm very seriously. They dispatched doctors, researchers, epidemiologists, bureaucrats. They sent an army of people to see if Fort Chip was okay. One of them was named Lisa Jensen, a researcher at Alberta Health and Wellness. She started to send emails to Dr. O'Connor asking him for help. But Dr. O'Connor did not reply to these emails. He refused to give Alberta Health and Wellness the information that he claimed was so alarming. You'll see that in the end, a large report by Alberta Cancer Board and Alberta Health and Wellness found, quote, no increase in cancer incidence in Fort Chip because of the oil sands. But what's so amazing is despite the fact that the science said there was no increase in cancer, despite the fact that Dr. O'Connor was raising the alarm in the CBC, in the Globe and Mail, starting to do commerce with Greenpeace, he refused to give information about his so-called cancer cases to the Alberta Cancer Board, which by the way is the law. Every cancer case in Alberta has to be reported to the Cancer Board. It's not some political organization, it's the Cancer Board. It's part of the healthcare system. Obviously, they keep the patient information confidential. It's just how we track and fight cancer. Why would Dr. O'Connor, who claimed to care so deeply about cancer patients, refuse to give the information to the Cancer Board, the people who could help? Let me show you information about a nurse who worked with Dr. O'Connor. This is all in the report. The nurse's name is George Garreau. He was the head nurse in Fort Chip, and he was desperately trying to get this information to the Cancer Board. Here's what he says. I spoke with our physician who is adamant that we not allow an outside agency access to the files. I am not sure what to do as I believe that we need this study. 
but I am now caught in the middle. So the head nurse in Fort Chip, someone who actually lives there, not just jets in from time to time when the cameras are with them, he said, we need to study, we need to help our people. But Dr. O'Connor actually stonewalled them. He actually said, at this point, I am ready to quit. The nurse was so frustrated with the gatekeeping and the secrecy of Dr. O'Connor, he was considering quitting. Here's another email from George Thoreau, the head nurse, to the Alberta Health and Wellness investigator that same day. Hi, Lisa, help. I'm at my wit's end. I had explained to my staff uh, and Dr. O'Connor that you and your team were expected to come and look at our active files. Can you help? Dr. O'Connor was keeping secret his so-called findings from the nurse who was supposed to give them to the cancer board. Dr. O'Connor was keeping these facts a secret from the people who were coming to help. Why would you do that? Well, we know, because they were made up. Uh, the, Dr. O'Connor wasn't very helpful in forthcoming to Alberta Health and Wellness, the Alberta Cancer Board, even the head nurse in Fort Chip. But he was very forthcoming with national media, including um, the National Review of Medicine that wrote a story on March 30th, 2007, headline, Health Canada Muzzles Oil Sands Whistleblower. Of course, they didn't. How could they? How could a federal department muzzle a doctor working for a local health board? It made no sense. But that was what Dr. O'Connor was focusing on, the myth of himself as a whistleblower being muzzled. He was never muzzled. Health Canada doesn't have the power to muzzle anyone. They're not a court with restraining orders. How do you even muzzle someone? What does that even mean? <laughs> the media wasn't going to ask. They loved the narrative too much to check. It was so bad, this propaganda, that the acting chief medical officer of health, and I'm quoting from the report here, Dr. Karen Grimsrud wrote to Dr. O'Connor and requested that he provide the names of patients who'd suffered from colon cancer and cholangiocarcinoma. They were so desperate to find these so-called victims, the head medical officer wrote to him. He didn't answer. He didn't answer. I'm going to go down to page 7 now, and I'm almost done, but I want to show you the facts that Dr. O'Connor tried to keep secret, and if we didn't have this leaked document, we wouldn't know the truth. In the end, there were two deaths, not four, five, or six, from cholangiocarcinoma. Dr. O'Connor lied. There were other health issues, as there often are on Indian reserves. Higher levels of diabetes, injury-related accidents. That's life in a small town. That's life in Aboriginal communities. There are issues unrelated to oil sands on every reserve in the country. But Dr. O'Connor blamed the oil sands. I wonder if that had anything to do with the fact that he was a Greenpeace activist. I'm not gonna read all the facts that prove a lie to Dr. O'Connor. I'm just gonna go now to a summary of the findings. I'm on page nine of the document now. Dr. O'Connor obstructed the Alberta Cancer Board. That was the allegation and that was the evidence. And so in conclusion, on page 11, the, the College of Physicians and Surgeons said that Dr. O'Connor persisted in exaggerating his claims. And finally, on page 13, the resolution. This is important. It is the position of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta that the preferred resolution of this matter was to provide the public with a clarification of the issues raised, the evidence gathered, the responses received, and the corrections required to reflect the truth as we understand it. Unfortunately, consensus as to the content of a public statement could not be reached by the involved parties. In other words, Dr. O'Connor refused to let this document be released. He refused to allow the facts of the studies to come out. He refused to allow the facts to come out that he actually hadn't seen or diagnosed these cancers that he claimed. Of course he wanted to cover this up, because it contradicted his public spin campaign, paid for in part by Greenpeace. Let me read one closing sentence. The parties accept that making inaccurate statements or claims and failing to fulfill one's legal and ethical obligations are not acceptable behaviors and needed in this instance to be declared as such. Well, I just showed you, even though this report came out years ago, it was leaked, 
I just showed you that as recently as this week, the Edmonton Journal, the Thai, the Huffington Post, various newspapers around the country are still propagandizing that cancer rates in Fort Chip were elevated, that Dr. O'Connor linked them to the oil sands, that he was muzzled as a whistleblower, and he was vindicated. Every one of those statements is not true. There was no linkage to the oil sands. The cases he claimed to exist never happened. Far from being a whistleblower, he was the stonewaller who refused to give information to the cancer board, even though his own head nurse pleaded with him to do so. Far from being vindicated, he was condemned by the College of Physicians and Surgeons. That is, his fellow doctors condemned him as a liar. No wonder he wanted this report kept secret. Do you want to read this report for yourself? It's fascinating. You won't find it in most media, certainly not the Huffington Post, the Thai, the Edmonton Journal, Fort McMurray Today. But you will find it on the rebel.media. It's easy to find. I set up a special website for it, www.johnisaliar.com. For the rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant. Thank <laughs> you.